In this video, we'll look at the absolute risk attribution, which is covered in active equity investing portfolio construction. So let's start by looking at an example. Okay, let's say we have a portfolio of three assets with a different weightage. Okay, it adds up to 100%. Then you have the respective standard deviation and then the correlation between the assets. Now, uh, of course, on the diagonal, we can see that these are all one. Uh, which are the basically the correlation between A with itself, therefore it's equals to 1, the maximum. Then you have the correlation between A and B, the correlation between A and C, and which happens to also be mirrored on the other side of it. Okay, So you can see the, the same number on each uh, opposite side. And between B and C, the correlation is 0 0.33. So let's say we, we start off slow. Okay, we, I'll slowly build up towards the final part so that we, we cover everything. So uh, first of all, let's say if you are given the correlation in the question, okay, and they don't give you the covariance terms. So you have to work out what is the variance and the covariance, okay? So um, to calculate variance, okay, we will just take, of course, uh, the standard deviation. It's just your standard deviation, uh, standard deviation squared. Okay, so that's pretty much simple. You just have to square each of this number and you get the, the variance of each asset. Okay, but what about the covariance? Okay, so how is covariance related to correlation? So correlation uh, in itself, okay, let's say between A and B, for example, is equals to the covariance of A and B uh, divided by the standard deviation of A and the standard deviation of B. So if I work this out, the covariance of A and B would be equals to the correlation of A and B, okay, multiplied by the standard deviation of A multiplied by the standard deviation of B. Okay, that's, that's what we need to do for each of these assets, okay, if you do not have the covariance to start with. So let's let's do this. So we, we start off with the variance, okay, so the variance, uh, let's, the variance for A will be, I'll convert to decimal, okay, I usually do the workings in, in uh, decimal, uh, so instead of in percentage, so let's do that. So 0 0.152, okay, so uh, 0 0.152 to the power of 2, that's a, uh, 0.0231 okay 0 0.0231 uh, then the variance for b would be equals to 0 0.1210 square so 0 0.121 uh, power of 2 so that's 0 0.0146 okay then lastly for the variance of c that will be 0 0.09 square so that's uh, 0 0.09 to the power of 2. So that's 0 0.0081. Okay, so that's the variance for A, B, and C. Okay, we'll keep this for now. Next, we move on to the variance uh, covariances. So for the covariance of A and B, okay, so that will be the correlation of A and B, which is uh, 0 0.42. 0 0.42 times the standard deviation, 0 0.152 times uh, 0 0.121. So this is 0 0.42 times 0 0.152 times 0 0.121. So that's a 0 0.00077. Okay, and then the covariance between, let's say, uh, A and C will be, uh, let's say, 0 0.65 times 0 0.152 multiplied by 0 0.09. So that's uh, 0 0.65 times 0 0.152 times 0 0.09. So that's 0 0.0089. Okay, and then we have covariance of uh, B and C. Okay, so between B and C, uh, the correlation is uh, 0 0.33 uh, multiplied by standard deviation of B times standard deviation of C. So this is 0 0.33 times 0 0.121 times 0 0.0, oops, uh, 0 0.33 times uh, 0 0.33 multiplied by 0 0.121 multiplied by 0 0.09. Okay, so that's 0 0.0036. Right, so we have all these numbers, so, so we're going to line them up uh, to, to form a variance covariance matrix. So on the diagonals here, we'll replace it with the variances of A, variance of B and C. And then here we'll replace it with the covariance of A and B. Okay, this covariance of A and C. 
and the covariance of B and C. Okay, so we'll line them up in this matrix. So this is what we're going to get. Okay, so this is a result of what we have computed earlier. Okay, so just to show you these are the numbers we obtained, and then this is just the summarized version. So we have done the we are done with the first part. Now let's say with the covariance uh, variance covariance matrix, let's say now the question uh, requires you to calculate the contribution of asset A to the total variance. Now of course the total portfolio variance is not given here. Uh, we'll compute it shortly, but let's look at how much A contributes to the overall portfolio variance. And as we can see here, A is 30%, uh, I mean the portfolio invests 30% into asset A. So to do that, what we need to do is uh, we need to calculate the, cov oh, the sum of the covariance terms between A and the rest of the A with itself and A with B and C. So this is how I do it. It's, it's quite an easy way. So just remember that covariance always takes two terms at a time. So I'm going to do this. Okay. So uh, I'll take A and A. Okay. A with itself and A with B and A with C. Okay, so it is only two two uh, assets at a time. So when I write A and A, right, what, what it means here is that we'll take the weightage of A. I'll take the weightage of A times the weightage of A. Okay, weightage of A times weightage of A, and then multiply by the covariance of A and A. Now, uh, I purposely wrote it this way. So if you multiply the, weight, the weights of A with itself, so that's the weightage of A power 2, and the covariance of an asset with itself is the variance of the asset. Okay, I'll write variance of the asset. So this is just 0 0.3 to the power of 2, 0 0.3 to the power of 2, uh, multiplied by the variance, okay, which is 0 0.0231. Okay, so that's the contribution from A with A. Uh, so this is 0 0.3 to the power of 2 times 0 0.0231. So this is 0 0.002079. Right now between A to B, so let's do it, uh, weightage of A times weightage of B, okay, and then multiply by covariance of A and B. So, so that's uh, 0 0.3 times uh, weightage of B, which is 0 0.5, times the covariance of A and B, which is 0 0.0077. Okay, so you're just, if you're taking A and B, then just take the covariance between A and B. So let's calculate this. So for that, uh, so that would be 0 0.3 times uh, 0 0.5 times 0 0.0077. Okay, so that's uh, 0 0.001155, okay? 0 0.001155. Then lastly, for A and C, so weightage of A, weightage of A times weightage of C, okay, times covariance of A and C. So I'm just writing it out to show you clearly, but once you get the hang of it, you will see the pattern, all right? So the weightage of A is 0 0.3, weightage of C is 0 0.2, and the covariance of A and C is 0 0.0089, okay? So that's equals to 0 0.3 times uh, 0 0.2 times uh, 0 0.0089. So that's uh, 0 0.000534. Right, so we now calculate the total amount. So that's the total contribution. So I'll start from this number. So I'll just, uh, since we have it, so I'll just plus 0 0.001155 plus 0 0.002079. Okay, so that's uh, 0 0.003768. Right, so that's the contribution of A to the total uh, variance of the portfolio. Then of course I'll do this with B as well. Okay, so we'll just move slowly to B. Now if I'm trying to calculate the contribution of asset B to the total variance, we're gonna do the same thing again. So we start from B, so we have B and B, and B and A, and B and C, okay? So B and B now, so you will take the weightage of B, which is 0 0.5, times the weightage of B, 0 0.5, okay, which is this and then multiply by the covariance of B with B, which is the variance of B. Okay, so that's 0 0.0146. And then for B and A, you will take the weightage of B, which is 0 0.5, times the weightage of A, which is 0 0.3, okay, times the covariance of uh, A and B, which is 0 0.0077. Okay, so I'll just focus on this column here, so it's easier to focus. Okay, and then for B and C, we'll take uh, weightage of B is 0 0.5, weightage of C is 
20%, 0.2, and then multiply by the covariance of B and C, which is 0.0036, okay? So now we'll calculate each of this. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, for the first one, is 0.5 times uh, 0.5 uh, times 0.0146. Okay, so we have the number, but let's be more efficient. I'll store one, just skip the number here. Then for the second term is 0 0.5 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.0077. So that's 0 0.001155. So again, store two. Okay. And the last one is 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.0036. Okay. So that's the last contribution. So store three. Now I will sum everything up. So from the first plus the second plus the third. So I'm getting 0 0.005165. Okay, so that's the answer here. This is 0 0.005165. That's the contribution of asset B to the total variance. Now, since we, are, we have done B, now let's do the final one, which is C. Okay, so we do C now. So C, so let's do it. C and C, we have C and A and C and B. So for C and C, we'll start from 20, 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times uh, 0 0.0081. Okay, so this is the variance of asset C. Okay, and then for C and A, C and A is C is 0 0.2, A is 30%, uh, 0 0.3 times the covariance, okay, which is 0 0.0089. And then for C and B, that's 20%, 0 0.2 times B, 0 0.5. Okay, times uh, the covariance of B and C, which is uh, 0 0.0036. Again, we'll compute the, the individual sum, uh, the individual product, then we'll sum it up. So now we have uh, 0 0.2 times uh, 0 0.2 times 0 0.0081. Okay, so I'll store 1. And then for the second term, 0 0.2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.0089. Alright, so store 2. And then for the last pair, which is uh, 0 0.2 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.0036. So store 3. Okay, so sum it up. Recall 1 plus recall 2 plus recall 3. So that's uh, 0 0.001218. Okay, so we have the contribution of each asset to the total variance. So we finally, we compile all these results, okay? And then we have this table here, okay? We add, a, we add a new column with the contribution that we computed earlier. So let's say now you're asked to estimate the standard deviation of the portfolio, okay? Before we do that, uh, sometimes uh, they may ask you, they may ask you to calculate the percentage contribution to the total variance, okay? So in order to do that, uh, we will compute the total so if you take the sum of all this, so we take the sum 0, 0, 3768 uh, plus 0 0.005175 plus 0 0.00, oops, okay, 1218. So that's a 0 0.0, 0 0.0101061, 161, okay? So that's, that's the... Uh, Total, and this is also the total variance okay this is also your portfolio variance in this case if you want to convert this to percentage contribution all you need to do is just take the contribution of each asset divide by the total variance uh, for example for this uh, for uh, asset a the contribution would be 0 0.003768 divide by 0 0.01061 okay so that would be equals to uh, 0 0.003768 divided by 0 0.01061. Okay, so that's about uh, 37, 37.08%. Uh, okay, so that's 37.08%. So for asset B, that's uh, 0 0.005175 divide by 0 0.01061 multiplied by 100 so that's 50.93% uh, and lastly for C that's uh, 0 0.001218 okay and divide by 0 0.01061 of course I could have just taken 100% minus this 2% it will give me the same uh, anyway 
so this will be about 11.99 percent okay 11.99 percent so it adds up to 100 percent okay so you may have to do this some uh in the exam i mean uh, they could ask you to calculate the absolute contribution or the percentage contribution so just be wary of that okay and as uh, for calculating standard deviation of the portfolio, what do we do? Okay, it's just the square root of the portfolio variance, uh, which in this case is 0 0.010161. So that will be equals to 0 0.010161. Then we square root, so that's 10.08%. Uh, okay, so that's your portfolio standard deviation. Okay, so of course uh, I built everything one by one just to give you a, a complete picture. Of course, in the in the exam, uh, they may give you uh, let's say covariance metrics as a starting point. Uh, they may they may give you uh, the portfolio uh, variance or standard deviation. Okay, instead of asking you to calculate it. Okay, but this is just to give you a very complete picture to how um, the absolute risk attribution is done.